It's December, and you know what that means? It means I can wear my Hawaiian shirt with the little Santas on it. But aside from that, it also means that it's December, where retro tech YouTubers from around the world get together and collaborate by making videos celebrating all things MS-DOS. So for our entry, we're going to look at Concurrent DOS 386, a long forgotten and not that well known multi-user, multitasking alternative to MS-DOS from digital research. Hello and welcome to Operation 8-Bit. I'm your host, Tony Landy, and over there behind the camera, it, we have my faithful sidekick, Sparky, making sarcastic comments. For those of you who are new to our channel, keep an eye out for those. They pop up from time to time during the video, and they look like this. I don't know, I was trying to be funny. Throughout the 1980s, MS-DOS was pretty much the main operating system for IBM compatible PCs, and it was definitely the most common OS for business users. There was a huge library of software available for the platform, ranging from word processors to spreadsheets to databases that made businesses of all sizes more efficient. Compared with the pre-1980s world of typewriters, paper filing, and handwritten lists and ledgers, Businesses that were early adopters of personal computers were much more productive and far more profitable. Obviously, it didn't take that long for everyone to realize that the more PCs they could put in the hands of their employees, the more competitive and profitable their businesses could become. And if you were a slick go-go businessman in the 1980s, you knew everything was about competition and profit. Back in the 1980s, I was the toast of Wall Street. I was having whiskey with Boski and cookies with Milken. As computers in the office became more ubiquitous, the need to share information between users became more prevalent, and there was a growing desire among end users to be able to run more than one application at a time. Now, in today's world, it's hard to imagine not being able to multitask on a do dozen different things at once. At any given time, we have a web browser open with a half a dozen tabs, a spreadsheet or two crunching numbers, a few different Word documents that we're actively editing, and all of this while we're answering emails and streaming YouTube videos. But back in the dark ages, in the early 80s, before Windows, PCs running MS-DOS were single user and single tasking. They could only do one thing at a time for one person at a time. This was also a time when PC networks were very rare and very expensive and very difficult to implement. Now, there were multi-user, multitasking operating systems for PCs that were available before Windows or OS 2. One in particular that I used to work on was SCO Xenix. But although Xenix did solve the multi-user, multitasking issue, it lacked the software support that MS-DOS had. So despite having better capabilities in that area, it wasn't the answer that business users and owners were looking for. Enter Concurrent DOS by Digital Research. Yes, Digital Research, the same company that created CPM back in 1974. First released as Concurrent PC DOS in 1984, this MS-DOS compatible operating system could run up to four programs at once and could even support a second user by attaching a low-cost dumb terminal to the PC's serial port. Now, the first release had a few problems and it wasn't perfectly DOS compatible. And of course, it had its detractors. In the June 1984 issue of PC Mag, Peter Norton stated that he thought multi-user and multitasking were more than PCs were meant to handle. He even went on to say, it's like turning a passenger car into a dump truck. Despite its initial shortcomings, 
The OS showed promise and digital research followed up over the next few years with new versions that were built to take advantage of the more powerful CPUs that were coming out around the same time. In my opinion, the best of these was Concurrent DOS 386, released in 1987 which, as the name implies, was designed to run on PCs with the Intel 8036 processor. This version really took advantage of the 386's virtualization capabilities, which allowed it to run most DOS applications natively, even on dumb terminals. Digital Research claimed that it could support up to 20 simultaneous users, each running four applications without any impact to performance. It was a true multi-user DOS operating system that even supported database record locking to prevent users from stepping on each other's changes. Okay, with the history lesson out of the way, let's dive in and get a closer look at concurrent DOS 386 in action. Now, our original plan was to try to get this thing running on bare metal, but we ran into a ton of problems and at the end of the day, we just couldn't get it to work on any of the hardware we have. We'll touch on some of that here, and for the fun of it, we're planning on doing a Nibbles and Bytes episode that walks through the issues that we ran into and how we got around most of them. Now, before we get started, just a reminder that if you haven't done so already, please take a moment and click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon. For this show and tell, we're going to use PCM emulating a 386DX. I've got this one set up with 4 gigs of memory, a VGA card, and a beefy 300 megabyte hard drive. Getting the installation software on a bootable floppy was a huge pain in the ass. And this is part of the problems that I was mentioning a minute ago that we're going to cover in that other episode. Suffice to say, once we finally got those issues resolved, the install its process itself was pretty straightforward. From this boot screen, you start the install by pressing F10. And since our VHD wasn't partitioned, I jumped over to FDisk to get it configured. After rebooting, it's more sitting around watching the grass grow while the install copies over the files from the floppies and configures the system files on the hard disk. Since this OS is targeted towards business users, I went ahead and installed MS Word. I did this from disk images that I downloaded from WinWorld PC. And I gotta tell you, I sure don't miss the good old days of swapping out floppies to install software. Since business users like to have a little fun when the boss is away as well, I went ahead and decided to load a few games. For this, I just used WinImage to open up the hard disk and then copied the folders over directly, which was a lot faster. So with everything set up, let's take a closer look at what we have going on. After rebooting, the splash screen displays the system configuration information. And you'll see here that some, for some reason, the computer still thinks it's stuck in the 1980s. Let's set it to the current date, and for grins and giggles, let's see if the OS is Y2K compliant. All right, I'll be damned. It is. The next thing I want to point out is the status bar here at the bottom of the screen. These first four sections are the session windows. The highlight shows you which is the one that's currently being displayed. And to navigate between them, you hold down the control key and then use the numbers one through four on the number pad. Right now, they're all blank because I don't have any programs running. But when you do have an app running, it'll display the name of that app in each one of these spaces. Next to that, we have our station indicator. Since we're at the main computer, this is set to zero. If we were on a terminal, this would show the number assigned to that device. And over here on the far right, we have the numlock and cap lock indicators right next to the current time. From the command line, concurrent is pretty much on par with MS-DOS 3. Although there are some commands that are slightly different. The user manual lists all of these out and shows how normal DOS commands map to concurrent commands. 
Concurrent also has some additional commands that DOS doesn't. And these are mainly to support the multi-user, multitasking operations. The manual explains these in decent detail, and most of them have help text that you can display by using the H switch. The OS even nicely supports piping and output redirection. Now, one thing I do like is that it does have the ability to do the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the recently run commands that you've entered. But that actual list can be persisted into other session windows. So yeah, at the end of the day, basically it's MS-DOS with a few extra steps. Obviously the big difference, at least in theory, is the fact that this is a multitasking OS. So let's put that to the test by firing up a few programs. I'm going to start up MS Word in the first window and Zork in the second. In the next two, I'm going to run some apps that come with the OS. One is Concurrent File Manager and the other is Card File. Now with all the apps running, I'll hit Control-1 to jump back to Word so I can start writing the great American novel. I've got writer's block already. Maybe playing a little Zork would clear that up. Damn, I always forget not to grab everything too early. Anyway, you get the point. Concurrent handles the multitasking thing pretty well. And over here in the File Manager app, we can even see what programs are running and how much many memory each one of them is using. Now, from a gaming standpoint, Concurrent really does fall short. It did fine with Zork, but I really couldn't get anything else working. Doom wouldn't even load, and this Tetris knockoff just froze. I did get this version of Super Mario Brothers to run, but there was no sound and the controls didn't even work. So if you're looking for an operating system as an alternative for DOS gaming, this one definitely isn't it. Despite its multitasking capabilities, concurrent DOS never really became that popular with business users, and it wound up being relegated to niche custom applications like retail point of sales and medical billing software which is what I actually used it for back in 1990. Digital Research continued to release updated versions all the way up until 1991, when they came out with an entirely new version rebranded as multi-user DOS, which is actually what I have running here on this little HP Mini. Unfortunately, MDOS suffered from several technical limitations and it was really difficult to install and configure. It had to have its own special device drivers for common hardware, and it was limited in its ability to support co common peripherals like sound cards, CD-ROM drives, and even mice. There was also the price to consider. It was pretty typical for a new computer to come with the latest version of MS-DOS already installed on it. MDOS had to be licensed separately, and it retailed for about 300 bucks, over 600 bucks today. With PC and LAN prices falling and new multitasking platforms like Windows 3.0 really taking hold, multi-user DOS was finally discontinued in 1992. One thing that I will give MDOS is that unlock, unlike concurrent DOS, I can actually play games on this one. Even, even plays music to the speaker. So that about wraps it up for this special December episode of Op Operation 8-Bit. I wanna give a big shout out to my fellow retro tech YouTubers for allowing me to take part in this event. I've made sure to drop a link to the official playlist in the description below. So make sure to go check out their videos when you get a chance. There are some really interesting episodes this year that are well worth watching. Also, don't forget, if you want to see the sausage making that we had to go through to get a set of bootable, bootable install discs put together, make sure to check out our Nibbles and Bites follow-up episode. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe because we have more new videos on the way. Oh, and speaking of more videos, if anyone out there has an old 386 that they're willing to donate, please let us know. We would actually love to do a follow-up to this episode where we try to connect a terminal to a machine running concurrent DOS 386. Finally, please consider supporting us on Patreon. As a reminder, all profits from any ad revenue that we make from this channel go to support charitable organizations. But as a Patreon supporter, you can help us offset the production costs associated with creating these videos. Again, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Operation 8-Bit. Initially released as concern, concurrent, <laughs> initially, <clears throat> first released as concurrent PC DOS in 1984. I'm hurting. Oh, it's not picking up on oh. anything. Wow, okay. <laughs> Boy, that would have really sucked, get through all of that, finally get through the goddamn scene, it's like, there's no fucking audio. We did it. We wanted to shout. <coughs> no one could hear what you're saying. Man, nobody wants to hear what I'm saying. <laughs>